Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 2. This tutorial will focus on accounting for non-accumulating paid absence liabilities. This tutorial has one basic learning objective, and that is to review the accounting for non-accumulating paid absence liabilities, also known as compensating absence liabilities. So if you see this term anywhere in the notes or in other examples or anything you may find, these are referring to the same thing. This tutorial is based on the Voyager Inc. example, so please make sure that you download the correct file and have pre-read the information so that you're ready to follow along. This problem has two basic requirements. The first is to determine the absence liability relating to Mr. Tuvok's paternity leave, and the second is to prepare any necessary journal entries to record that absence liability on January 15, 2020. Before we get into actually calculating the um, absence liability and doing any journal entries, let's just review the timeline for this problem. On January 15th, 2020, Mr. Tuvok comes to the owner of the company or the president and provides notice that he plans to take paternity leave. But that paternity leave does not begin until April 1st, 2020. So there's a gap where nothing happens here. Then Mr. Tuvok goes on paternity leave and is entitled to some basic government benefits, during which time he also receives a top-up. So in this green period here, there's a top-up that uh, Mr. Tuvok is receiving from the company. And that goes from April 1st, 2020 to March 31st, 2021, at which point the top-up ends. And then there's another period of four months where there's an additional paternity benefits that are paid to Mr. Tuvok. So there's a total of 18 months of benefits that are paid. The first 12 months represents an additional amount to the government-funded paternity leave and then four months additional amounts. So there's a two-month period where there is nothing that happens. Uh, he receives no benefits and the entire leave ends on September 30th, 2021. Now let us uh, determine or review how the amounts for the compensating absence liability or the paid absence liability were determined. So these are the numbers that we're going to be looking for. We start with Mr. Tuvok's salary of $75,000. Then we subtract the government benefit of $39,000 calculated as $3,250 per month times 12 months. So that's the standard paternity leave that's allowed by the government. Once we take the salary less the benefit, this gives us a salary differential or the top-up amount that we are referring to that the company will add in addition to the government benefit. So this $36,000 is this $36,000 here for the first 12 months, and so that's a liability. Next, we can calculate the additional paternity leave, so that's the blue shaded area up here as 50% of Mr. Tuvok's salary times the four months. Okay, so the company is allowing him to earn the equivalent of 50% of his salary for up to a period of four months. So that's an additional $12,500. This results in a total paid absence liability of $48,500. So that consists of the salary differential plus the additional liability. Now for requirement two, where we can record the journal entry. On January 15th, 2020, we debit employee benefit expense for the total amount of the liability, 48,500, and we will credit an employee benefit liability or some other similarly named account to record the liability of $48,500. There's an important point here. Notice, however, that the absence liability is actually recognized on the date of the obligating event, which is January 15th, 2020 not when the paternity leave begins. So Mr. Tubok is providing notice, and that's, it's on the date that the notice is provided that the liability is recorded. So not when the leave begins, but when the uh, liability is identified. Now we will complete requirements three and four, which go into a little bit more of the technical journal entries that are required to be recorded during the period where Mr. Tubok is on leave. So for requirement three, we're going to show what the repeating monthly journal entry would be to pay Mr. Tubok his salary differential for the 12 months from April 1st, 2020, all the way through March 31st, 2021. So that would be the green shaded area in the timeline. And then we will record for requirement for the repeating monthly entries to pay his additional paternity benefit for the four months from April 1st, 2021 to July 31st. So this would be the, the light blue shaded area in the timeline. Let's now proceed with requirement three, the repeating entries every month to record the salary differential. 
We'll presume that the journal entries are made at the end of the month. Even though the leave begins on April 1st, we'll record the journal entry uh, on April 30th. So every month at the end of the month from April 30th, 2020 to March 31st, 2021, the company will record a debit to the employee benefit liability for $3,000. And that is the $36,000 top up benefit, right? Divided by the 12 months. And of course, cash will be credited in order to pay that out. And that would happen over and over again for a period of 12 months. Now we will complete requirement four, the repeating journal entry to report the additional paternity benefit in this blue shaded area here. That additional benefit begins on April 1st, 2021. But we will record the journal entries at the end of the month for every month for four months, starting April 30th, ending July 31st, 2021. We will debit the employee benefit liability and credit cash for the amount of 3,125. And that's calculated as the 12,500 paternity benefit divided by the four months, or if we take the 50% salary, just prorated times uh, one over 12 months, that's 31.25 per month. Here's basically what happened in this problem then. So we have the, the liability. What we did is we put in 36,000 represented by the top up, another 12,500 for the additional parental leave, uh, giving us a total of 48,500. Then for a period of 12 months, we took 3,000 each time. So 12 times 3,000 would finally uh, give us an ending balance here of $12,500. And then 3125 times four months would give us an ending balance of zero. So that's exactly what happened here. Okay, and now for some key points to remember. First, compensating absence liabilities must be recorded when they are known to exist. And they're expensed in the current period with the corresponding liability, as we saw, and that uh, liability happens at the time of the obligating event. Next, all payments to the employees are then drawn from that absence liability account over the period of the absence. That concludes tutorial two on non-accumulating paid absence liabilities.